Hey everybody, this is Steve and it's our Christian duty to care for all creation. One of our goals on Be The Bee is to open our eyes to truly find God in everything, every day. That includes nature and all creation. Because God really is present in all places and filling all things. And when he made the world from the tiniest grains of sands to the biggest galaxies, he called it all good. And one of the world's greatest teachers on this subject, who has done so much to explain how the gospel shapes our everyday choices, is His All Holiness Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew of Constantinople. Stephen, we are delighted to greet you and all our beloved viewers of Be The Be around the world. A new biography of His All Holiness has just been published. Stay tuned to the very end of the episode for how you can win a copy signed by the Ecumenical Patriarch himself. Some people call His All Holiness the Green Patriarch because he has dedicated himself to countering the consumerist, materialistic mindset of our modern age with the ascetic mindset of orthodoxy, showing us how it impacts the way we care for the environment. His Christ-centered perspective is crucial because, unfortunately, in our desire for wealth and comfort, it's easy to think that the world exists simply to be used by us. That it's a collection of resources made for us to use as we see fit. But while the world was made for us to be a source of life and beauty, we were also made for the world to be its caretakers. The environment isn't merely a source of scientific knowledge or economic opportunity. It's God's good creation, formed out of love to be loved by God and by us. And to help us see that, I'm very happy to welcome back Father John Chrisavis, theological advisor to His All Holiness and author of the new biography. Thanks, Steve. It's great to be back with you. All the beauty and life-giving power of creation is meant to reveal God, who is the source of beauty and life. All of creation is woven together so that the bees and the deserts, the cities and the elephants, and the sheep and you and I all rely and depend on each other for our continued existence. You see, everything from the tiny blades of grass to the massive icebergs are cared for and loved by the God who created and sustains all things. And God gives us humans a special role in this mystery of creation. He asks us to be priests of His creation, to be stewards and co-creators in the world He loves. So because we are co-creators, we are given creativity and rationality minds that allow us to come up with amazing new ideas, scientific advancements, art and culture, things that add to the wonder and beauty of the world. But because we are stewards, we're also called to act for the life and sustainability of the world. To remember that it is God's creation, that we must care for it as He would Himself with love, and an ultimate desire for it to be transformed by Him into the Kingdom of Heaven. We're called to be priests of creation, offering all things back in thanksgiving to the Lord who made and gave us all things. As we've said before, liturgy should shape every moment of our lives and the way we interact, not just with all people, but with all things. And as priests of creation who offer the world back up to God, when we are united to the High Priest, to Jesus Christ, we coexist with nature, with respect, harmony, and love. Creation, which in our fallenness often seems turned against us, becomes tranquil and harmonious when we care for it as the Creator cares for it. Remember how Christ, in the middle of a storm, walked on water? Instead of drowning him, the water supported him. Or consider the prophet Daniel, who was thrown to the wild, ravenous lions, which didn't eat him. Or Saint Seraphim of Saroph, who used to care for a wild bear that was gentle with him. Or Saint Siloan, who taught that our Christian love should extend 
to even the tiniest blades of grass. That story from the life of St. Silouan, written by Elder Sophroni, is one of my favorites. He was walking along a path one day with his disciple, and the disciple used his walking stick to whack a clump of grass for no reason. St. Silouan didn't say anything. He just shook his head sadly. Reflecting on it years later, Elder Sophroni added this important lesson. The Spirit of God teaches the soul to love every living thing, so that she would have no harm come to even a green leaf on a tree, or trample underfoot a flower of the field. Thus, the Spirit of God teaches love towards all, and the soul feels compassion for every being. This is exactly the gentle, spirit-filled message that the Ecumenical Patriarch has been teaching and that we are called, all of us, to embrace. The Ecumenical Patriarch has been an important leader in the global conversation about the environment, especially because he approaches the issue first and foremost as an Orthodox Christian. The solution of the ecological problem is not only a matter of science technology and politics, but also and perhaps primarily a matter of radical change of mind, of new values, of a new ethos. His All Holiness has called for us to repent of our selfish and materialistic desires, to change our ways, the habits that lead us to consume and destroy God's creation without restraint. For Orthodox tradition, sin has a cosmic dimension and cosmological impact. As priests of creation, we also know that our actions and decisions do not impact only ourselves or just those around us. They affect the entire created order. Our fallenness not only distorts us, but all of God's creation. So. To have a truly orthodox understanding of environmentalism, we have to start with our own repentance and our own ascetic practice. Environmental change begins with the change of our own heart. Yes, we must listen to good science and enact good policies to preserve the environment for generations to come. But these alone will not truly transform us and the world around us. Only our constant re-evaluation of our sins, a constant correction of our own wastefulness and failures as priests of creation will lay a lasting foundation for genuine and lasting change. So, as we take steps to be the bee, to love Christ and grow in His image and likeness, Let's take some time to reflect on how our desires and passions are impacting the world around us. Let's reconsider the way we use the resources with which we've been blessed, not simply as consumers, but as Christians. Let's begin to see how our gluttony, our materialism, and our selfishness are a betrayer of our role as priests of creation. Let's begin to see how our ascetic practices of fasting and living simply allow us to fulfill the role of caring for and transforming in love the natural world. So let's be the bee and become priests of creation. Dear friends, live orthodoxy every day and in every detail of your lives, not only on Sunday. Remember to like and subscribe and share. I'll see you all next week. Thanks to our supporters on Patreon who helped make this episode possible. To win a signed copy of the new biography of His All Holiness, simply share this video from our Facebook page, Y2AM, or our Twitter feed, at Y2AM underscore official. Every share is another chance to win.